Okay, so this evening, this is uh, part one, part one. And we are talking about revitalizing your health. And we're looking at the power of detoxification and cleansing. Uh, before I go any further, uh, is there any homework to report? Anybody did our homework from last week? I'm not, I'm not seeing anybody's face except mine this evening. I guess we are hiding behind our cameras. That's okay. Dora, did you do the homework? Sister White? Hi, Clary. Thank you for showing uh, the British face. Dora, Marilyn. Good evening, Good evening Dora. Homer, was it from the previous week that you wanted us to finish? Wow. Really? Okay. All right. Miss, Mrs. White, Marilyn? I'm not hearing Mrs. White, so I probably shouldn't do the homework either. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's move right along. All right. So revitalizing your health. And as usual, there are two things and two promises. Uh, the two things are to, <laughs> number one, take notes, uh, get paper and a writing instrument. Uh, the shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. Number two, the second thing is to stay away from the five worst words in the world. Uh, the five worst words in the world is, I've heard that before, That that creates closed-mindedness instead of open-mindedness. And the two promises I'll make to you is that you will learn something that you can put into practice today. That's a definite promise. And promise number two, I'm available to work with you further. Uh, our disclaimer is that the information provided in this presentation is intended for general informational purposes only and should not be considered as a substitute for professional medical advice, a diagnosis or treatment. As a naturopathic doctor, I am sharing insights and suggestions based on my expertise in natural health and wellness. However, it's important to consult with a medical doctor before making any significant changes to your health regimen, especially if you have underlying medical conditions or taking medications or have specific health concerns. Okay, so I just want to welcome you again this evening uh, as we go on our journey to revitalize our health and well-being. Uh, let me say, um, Clary, I haven't forgotten your request, um, but you could go on our YouTube uh, channel and if you type in Heal Lifestyle Academy, you should see a number of the videos there. That's, that's the fastest way. And do subscribe, right? And uh, pick the bell or whatever else you all normally do. All right? But um, there are a number of videos there. And if you don't see the ones that I haven't put all of them, but I put a number of them there. And if you don't see a particular one, just send me a text or remind me. All right? All right, my dear. Okay. So this evening, I want you to watch this video. I hope it plays. Um, it's about two minutes long. So take notes and listen carefully. Uh, let me know if you can hear the volume. Can you hear it? Can you hear the sound? No no sound? No. Okay, no. one second. One no. second. One second. I got you. I got you. Ooh. Okay, let's see here. Uh, what about now? Yes? No. What's going on with my sound? All right, hold on a second. Oh, yo, yo. Okay, uh, Nedez, I'll need you again. One second. I need to optimize the sound. That's what I need to do. Share sound. Okay, how is it? Nadej? 
No, it, it, it did yeah. not stop playing yet. How is the screen? It's good. Okay, one second, please. Can you hear it now? Yes. Wonderful. All right, so what are your thoughts? Could, could you open your mic and talk to me? Any thoughts? Yes. Very interesting. I experienced tamarind working and I wanted to know why I felt as though I took a laxative, but now I understand <laughs> why. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, okay, thank you. thank you, Sister Megan. Anybody else, any comments, questions? All right. I, I miss yeah. how they, I miss how she made the drink. You miss how they made the drink tomorrow? Okay, just for you tomorrow. Just for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll play it again tomorrow, but oh, but only if you show your face. That's the I deal. Can't right now. <laughs> you, can, you can't right now? No. Okay, but before the end of the session, Samna, you'll okay. show your face, right? Amen. Okay, good. <laughs> there you go.
ਦੇ ਦੁਕਾਨ ਦੇ ਕਾਲ Okay, uh, Tamara, I have a feeling is the music that you like. Mm-hmm. You can't fool me. All right. Okay, so everybody's good with that? Any comments or questions on the video? I think it does look like it's going to go it looks good for your colon because it looks like a colon. Mrs. White came alive. Amen. Finally. Okay. Good point. Good point. Good point. That's a very good point. Uh, I was telling somebody this week that uh if you look at certain foods that God has made and it is shaped like a body part for example walnuts are very mm. good good for the brain and it is shaped uh more or less designed to look like the brain all right you can think of any other foods the tambrans like, like, like the colon avocado, what else avocado looks like good for pregnancy doesn't it look like somebody's belly Okay. Uh, okay, Kevin, I I I am not going there. He's laughing. He doesn't disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, anybody else? What other food can you think about? Uh, yes, sorry, right, did, um... she, did she take the seed from tamarind? I'm sorry. Um did she, blend it, did she blend it with the seed? Yes, and then she strained it. So oh, where do you think tamarind in the Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, please. One at a time. One, hold on, Mrs. White. Go ahead, Tamara. Usually the seed is very hard. I didn't know you could blend it. Well, you you saw it on, on live TV, right? <laughs> okay, I'll try it out. Thank you. So, so you have to believe now tomorrow. I'll make a believer out of you. <laughs> All right. All right. Yes, sir, um, Marilyn. Where do you get ta- t- t- what is it? Tamarindo. I don't know. What is it? What's it called in English? At your farmer's Tell market. Tamarindo. Tamarindo. Whatever. Whatever you want to call it. I get at your farmer's <laughs> market. I don't know how. What is that in English? Is you said tamarind? Or tamarind. 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 You act like you know what I'm talking about. I only know it the Spanish way. I don't know about Le- Leave there. your husband over. He knows. You don't know. Be honest. Come on. Come on. You know that. All right. Let's move on because you know when. So where do you get that? Where do you find that? You know where to find that? Yeah. All right. Let's move on. All right. So we want to help you learn how to detox in the right way. So I'm going to cover topics um, such as the importance of detoxification, common sources of toxins, signs that your body needs a detox, uh, detox methods, and specific benefits for allergies and skin health. And like I said, today's part one. Uh, next week will be part two. Um, so before I dive into our discussion, I would like to know how many of you have heard of detoxification before and or have tried it. And feel free to share your experience in the chat if you don't want to talk. Of course, I wouldn't read the chat. So you better talk so I can hear you, but that's up to you. All right. So many of you have heard of detoxification before or have tried it. That's, that's, the, that's the only question. If you have heard of it and you have tried it and you want to share your experience very briefly. Pastor, yes, Sandra. yes, Sandra. So, so growing up as children in Jamaica, mm-hmm. every summer that we go back to school, we were detoxified with mm-hmm. herb. Okay. So I've used a herb. I get it at our market herb mm-hmm. when I need, when I think I need to be detoxified. Okay. I don't trust the other things that I see. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. All right. Anybody else? Is fasting the same as detoxification? That's we'll cover that briefly. Yes, so that's part of it. So then, papaya, to... seed. papaya seed is used for detoxification. Uh, it's just chewed up and eaten like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, um, are you answering the question, Elsie? Are you even like Sister White? So you have you heard no, of detoxification? I was just making a point. <laughs> I was just making a point that <laughs> the papaya seed and to support uh-huh. what the sister said earlier, mm-hmm. when we were kids in Jamaica, uh, before going back to school, after we'd have had our summer break, run around in the dirt and just mm-hmm. have fun, <laughs> they would make sure that we are detoxified before going back to school. I, put some water and water. I see that you're putting an emphasis on fun, Miss Elsie. So look at that, you had a lot of fun, didn't you? 
<laughs> but, but part of cabbage, eating cabbage is also a form of this detoxification. Okay, okay. All right, anybody else? You have, you have tried it, you have heard of it, what have you heard, what have been the results? And I'm going to ask you to stay muted unless you are unmuting to say something and then mute yourself again, all right? All right, so there are no more takers. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so why does detoxification matter? Who, who wants to share briefly? 30 seconds, anybody. Why does it matter to detoxify? It's to get rid of harmful, sometimes the very food that we eat. Mm -hmm. It's to have harmful bacteria. All right. Yeah, thank you. And it's to and... get rid of some of these things that um, we have in our bodies. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, there are impurities in our bodies, even for the draining of our lymph nodes. We need mm -hmm. to do certain things to get rid of all those impurities. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, so let's dive into why detoxification is a vital component of our overall health, right? Detoxification, briefly, is the process by which um, your body eliminates harmful toxins and waste products to maintain optimal functioning. Let me say it again. Detoxification is a process by which your body eliminates harmful toxins and waste products to maintain optim optimal functioning. And that's one of the reasons if you have to go to the bathroom to do number one, you don't want to practice holding it until the last second, all right? It will damage your kidneys, but also a lot of the toxins will go back into your bloodstream, into your body, right? The same as uh, number two. And a lot of us, when we wanted number two, and normally we are not constipated, but because we hold off all of the water from the stool goes back into the body. And when you go to the bathroom, the stool is dry and you feel like you're uh, being uh, constipated, right? And all the toxins are back in your body. Be very careful with that. Uh, it's the same reason uh, when you wake in the morning. Um, when I was growing up, my parents, my mother would tell my sisters, especially before they go to the kitchen to cook food, whatever, to... Uh, wash their faces and wash their arms because during the night, a lot of the toxic matter seeps through your pores of your skin, right? And it goes onto your clothing and what have you. And when you go to the kitchen without washing your arms or your face, all that stuff is going into the food. That's not protein. That's toxic, right? That's not protein. And so um, also some of us who grew up in the Caribbean or in the country in the United States, uh, your parents would normally remove the sheet uh, from the bed and take it outside, shake it, probably put it on the line to get sun dried because the sun uh, is a good detoxifier, kills a lot of germs, right? And especially if you are sick, flu season is coming, and we'll be going more into that next week. Flu season is coming, and you want to know that if you get the flu, the cold, you need to change your night clothing, depending on how extreme the cold is, probably every day, change your pillowcase, probably your sheet, because all of the toxins coming out of your body is going right on the pillowcase. And when you go back to sleep at night, all that gets back into your body and you take longer to heal, right? So toxins are not our friends at all. All right. So toxins uh, which are present in our environment, our food, and even uh, produced within our bodies can adversely impact our health. Uh, toxins can lead to a range of health issues uh, like allergies and skin conditions to more severe problems like chronic diseases. Now, uh, there's been a research study, and I have the link of the research on the slide, entitled The Impact of Environmental Toxins on Cardiovascular Diseases, right? Cardiovascular meaning diseases of the heart. And the study uh, looked at heavy metals like lead and pesticides that are found in environmental toxins, uh, which have been recognized for their role in contributing 
to cardiovascular diseases or CVDs, uh, even when people are exposed to them in small amounts over long periods. So sometimes, you know, you'll tell somebody, don't inhale, excuse me, secondhand smoke. They say, oh, you know, every now and then my husband smokes or my neighbor smokes, they wouldn't bother me. But uh, over a long period, it will bother you. It will add up. Uh, the same as if you have um, any amalgam in your teeth, any kind of metal filling in, your, in any of your teeth, uh, that is highly dangerous, especially when you brush your teeth. Uh, a lot of the fumes from that metal comes out, goes in, into your bloodstream, goes into your brain. Uh, also, if you drink hot liquids as well, right? So we need to be very careful uh, with lead poisoning and the other heavy metal that we'll go into in a while. So even at low levels, exposure to mercury, for example, can, ha can have harmful effects on various organs in the body, including your heart, your kidneys, and your nervous system, and your immune system, right? And that's one reason why I normally tell my clients that eating fish is more dangerous uh, than eating meat. Eating meat is highly dangerous. It is linked now to cancer. But eating fish is worse because of the mercury in the fish. Uh, the fat of the fish has the ability to retain mercury. And when you eat the fish, you're eating mercury. Now, mercury is so dangerous that if you go to your dentist to remove an amalgam, uh, by law, they have to use special equipment and to put that tooth that they extract in a special uh, container, in a special bag, and a special agency has to come pick it up, one tooth, right? That's how dangerous it is. It's very, very, uh, very dangerous. All right. So let's identify um, some sources of toxins. You know, uh, let's take a closer look at some of the common sources of toxins that we encounter every day, every day. Uh, some of it is in our food. Uh, foods can be contaminated with pesticides, herbicides, uh, preservatives, and additives, right? So pesticides, meaning it's some chemical they're spraying uh, allegedly to keep away pests, right? The herbicides, uh, it's for, the, it's for the, the food itself, it's supposed to enrich it. And the preservatives after the food is, is picked, it's on the shelf uh, to preserve it to last long, long shelf life. And additives, we spoke about additives, I think, two weeks ago, the poisons that they're putting into our body. No, last week. Um, and most of the additives are very addictive. And they are doing it on purpose so you can keep buying their poisonous food and then get food poisoning, right? Um, uh, there's something called uh, aflatoxin. I know you've heard that before in some shape or form. Uh, aflatoxins are various poisonous carcinogens. Carcinogens meaning they can cause poi um, cancer in your body. And mutagens that are produced by certain molds. For example, you have a lot of mold in cheese. A lot of us like cheese. It's deadly to your body. Um, particularly the Aspergillus species, a type of harmful uh, substance like al alpha toxins can be found in some of our foods like peanuts and corn. Right? It's very dangerous uh, to, eat some, uh, to eat peanuts, especially, and corn uh, in America. A lot of the pesticides and the herbicides that they're using in America still is banned in other countries. Yeah. Uh, so when you eat or drink things containing aflatoxin, it can be really bad for your health and may even lead to diseases or other problems. So it's important uh, to make sure your food does not have aflatoxin in it. And again, we talk about the susceptible foods, the corn and the peanuts. A lot of times these are fed uh, to cows and chickens. Right. And that and so here you have the peanut butter, for example, goes to human consumption, consumption, uh, the nuts fed to the hens, lay eggs, you eat it. Right. And the aflatoxin is in the corn. 
and it comes full circle back to us causing food poisoning. All right, air pollution, air pollution. Uh, air pollution, whether indoor or outdoor, I think uh, at the very onset of our seminars three months ago, we started talking about pollu air pollution, um, indoor and outdoor, and we introduced a number of plants that you should want to have in your home to help to detoxify your home, right? But air pollution, both the indoor and the outdoor, introduces toxins into our respiratory system, right? And a lot of these toxins, these pollutants, like things called uh, um, particulate matter, uh, uh, volatile organic compounds and other airborne toxins. And if you look on the slide, uh, they can cause headache, <laughs> excuse me, headache and anxiety. It Im impacts on the central nervous system, irritation of your eyes, nose and throat, breathing problems, inflammation, irritation, infections, asthma, uh, reduced lung function, cardiovascular disease, impacts on liver and spleen, the blood, lung cancer. I mean, you know, a lot of beautiful things that we don't want to happen to us. All right, um, toxins in our water. Again, I was talking a while ago about the fish, and a lot of the toxins or, or the mercury that are in the fish comes out of uh, toxins from companies dumping their waste products in the rivers that normally flow to the ocean or directly into the ocean. If you look on this slide here carefully, you'll see up here you have uh, sanitary uh, wastewater, right? And look, look how it's, it's coming down here. Right, and it's coming all the way across here into the water. Um, you have a separate sanitary sewer system, right? It's all coming down, it's all coming down to the same place, right? From the houses, you have the storm water uh, from the street when rain falls, industrial wastewater. It's all coming down, it's all coming down, same direction, straight in, into the water, yeah. Uh, sanitary. Sewer overflows, where does it go? Into the water, right? Combined sewer overflow into the water. Erosion and the soil has pesticides in it. It goes in the water. And if you look carefully, there are two people fishing, fishing downstream of all of this mess that's in the water. And what lives in the water? The fish. And they're there to catch the fish, right? So they're there to catch poison. They're to catch poison. We need to be very, very careful. Uh, toxins are present in our water supply. That's why it's not a good, a good idea to drink your tap water unless you have some kind of filter or reverse osmosis. It's highly dangerous, um, along with the chlorine and the fluoride that's in the water. It's very dangerous to our bodies. Um, but the toxins are present in our water supply. And there are a lot of heavy metals like lead, mercury, chlorine, fluoride and industrial pollutants. Uh, what about our everyday products, right? Um, even our everyday products, including household cleaners, personal care items, and plastics. These products can introduce toxins through skin absorption and inhalation. And a lot of times, most of us here probably use um, a lot of deodorants that we buy at a store or we want to save money, we buy a Dollar General or Dollar Tree or some other dollar something. And a lot of these uh, deodorants have um, aluminum in them. And when you put it under your arm, that goes straight into your bloodstream, right? Shampoos, um, soaps, sprays in our home. We need to learn to make our own. There are a lot of uh, advice on YouTube. I think I may do one presentation on how to make a few of those. Um, even your own toothpaste is very simple. Um, you can make a simple toothpaste with, um, uh, oh, where am I, uh, Nadej, you there? Nadej? Okay, Nadej, yeah. not. Okay, mm -hmm. are you there? Are you you're hiding behind the screen? Um, I'm trying to remember all of our ingredients for our toothpaste. Um. Charcoal. Charcoal powder. Peppermint. Um, you just the peppermint. peppermint. Yes. Eucalyptus oil. That's it. No, that's that's not it. Um uh, baking. Uh baking baking soda. Yeah, I think so. that's and, 
and no under liquid. Oh, uh, I, I, um, I do gin oxide. There we go, All right? And you can mix it to your consistency and it cleans your teeth and it keeps your mouth clean of bacteria. Very simple, very, very simple. All right? Okay, so how do toxins impact our human health? You see there's a, the human body there and the digestive system or what have you. How do toxins impact our human health? So numerous chemicals uh, possess toxin, toxic properties. And upon entering or interacting with our, our bodies, they can have detrimental effects. One of the primary mechanisms through which they harm the body is by interfering with crucial enzymes, uh, disrupting normal bodily functions. Enzymes play a vital role in facilitating various physiological processes within our bodies. And when toxins disrupt these enzymes, they hinder the production of uh, hemoglobin in the bloodstream, potentially hastening the aging process. So you see some people and, you know, they tell you their age, it might be 45, but they look like 60, you know, it, it's very possible that they're overloaded with toxins. It, it hastens uh, the aging process. All right. Oh, what happened there? Okay. All right. I have another video for you, I think. Is, it, is this the video? Okay. Why is it not going? Okay. What happened there? Okay, my video doesn't seem to be playing. I have a video here on um, hemoglobin, but it's not coming up for some reason. All right, so hemoglobin is like a special uh, protein in your red blood cells. It has iron. Okay, I just heard something. This is a hemoglobin molecule. Okay. It carries oxygen and gets transported by red blood cells throughout the, the body video? to organs like your brain. Okay, I'm hearing the volume. Were you guys seeing the video? Yes. You, you guys yes. were seeing see yes. the video? Okay, I'm sorry. I guess I'm the only one not seeing it. Okay. Um, let me try to get it again. I, I apologize. I thought it wasn't showing. Okay, what's happening now? Ah. It is showing. It, it's showing now? Yes, it is. Okay. Are you hearing hearing the audio as well? Not the audio. So what is going on? All right. So we let's move on from there. I'm not sure what's going on with it. All right. I said it's a special protein in your red blood cells. Um, it has iron in it, and the iron helps it to grab oxygen from the air when you breathe. Right. So it's very important for us to deep. Uh, have deep breaths every day to help the, the hemoglobin. Uh, the hemoglobin, so it grabs, the iron in the hemoglobin grabs the oxygen when we breathe. Then it carries that oxygen to every part of your body. So hemoglobin is the reason why your red blood cells are red. It's like a tiny oxygen courier inside your blood. Uh, furthermore, the disruption that we talk about can lead to a decline in energy production and reduce the body's ability to combat oxidative stress, right? And so if you look here at the slide um, showing oxidative stress, you're seeing the effect it has on the lungs. It can cause asthma, uh, chronic bronchitis. Uh, in, in a fetus, it can cause preeclampsia. Uh, IU growth restriction, uh, multiple organs can be affected, causing cancer, aging, diabetes, inflammation, infection. Uh, it can affect the brain, causing Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, memory loss, depression, stroke, attacking your eyes, cataract, uh, retinal diseases, your joints, arthritis, uh, rheumatism, your heart vessels, uh, atherosclerosis, hypertension, ischemia, type of stroke, cardiomyopathy, and heart failure, right? 
oxidative stress. And the impairment of these essential bodily functions heightens the risk of developing uh, various diseases, right? Like we just talked about, especially cancer, uh, chemical pneumonia, Parkinson's disease, cardiovascular disease, and therefore it is crucial to understand uh, the adverse effects of toxins on the body's enzymes as they can cause or contribute to a range of serious health issues. And we talked about the fish, right? So you can look here, uh, we're talking about mercury. Uh, mercury exposure can harm your brain, your kidneys, and your nervous system. It is particularly risky for developing uh, fetuses and young children. And as you see here, you have a probably a volcano eruption, there's a coal plant, there's a mine, and all of those things are emitting mercury that goes into the water. And you see the small fish or the tadpoles are eating it. The bigger fish eat a small fish, and uh, the bigger fish eat, eat that uh, big fish, and the biggest fish, and you eat the biggest fish, you eat all of this mercury, right? It's very, very serious and very dangerous. In fact, a lot of dentists now are no longer using amalgams um, for their patients. Uh, some of them knew of the dangers, but it was cheaper to use that than to use um, um, other things. So if you have amalgam in your mouth, you may want to preferably get it out as soon as possible. All right, what about lead? Lead, right? I see a lot of us, I always tell my, my kids, don't put their pencils in their mouths. A lot of carpenters put their pencils on their ear, right next to the head, that's very dangerous, right? The lead in the pencils are very dangerous. As a matter of fact, in the Caribbean, we don't call, these aren't called pencils, they're called leads because they're full of lead, right? Um, exposure to lead can harm your nervous system, especially in children. And it may cause developmental issues, lower IQs and behavioral problems. Don't let kids play with pencils, put it in their mouth, what have you. Um, cadmium, cadmium, another heavy metal. Cadmium uh, exposure can lead to lung and prostate cancer, as well as kidney damage. It's often linked <clears throat> excuse me, to long-term exposure, like smoking or consuming contaminated food. And it is found in batteries, a lot of batteries, contain cadmium. There are a lot of other things that can contain cad cadmium. We need to be very careful. Okay, so let's try to recognize the signs that your body needs to be detoxed, right? There are signs that your body will give you. So now that we understand where the toxins come from, we need to explore all of the signs that our body might be in need of detoxification. And there are a range of common symptoms and signs that can indicate the need for detoxification. And some of these include uh, digestive issues uh, like bloating, constipation, diarrhea, or frequent indigestion. These all might signal a toxic burden on your digestive system. Uh, the doctor is telling uh, Mr. Dog, it turns out your problem is not chronic fatigue. You are just dog tired. Uh, have you ever felt like, hey, man, I'm dog tired? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chronic fatigue. Uh, persistent fati fatigue, uh, persistent brain fog, or per a persistent lack of energy can result from toxic buildup in your body. Toxic buildup in your body. What about allergies? A lot of people are allergic to a lot of stuff and, you know, they get sick. Allergies uh, increase or your sensitivities to it might be connected to a toxic load. Your body might be uh, toxic. What about mood swings or mental fog? You know, some simple stuff. You forget a person's name that you know well. You see the person, but you just can't get the name. You're having sudden mood swings. You're happy now. You're sad. All right. All of this can be impacted by toxins. And it could affect your mental clarity, your mood, 
and your cognitive functioning. Toxics. All right, so effective detoxification methods. And there are a few I would uh, recommend to you, advise, suggest. So let's explore some effective detoxification methods to revitalize your health. Uh, one of them is dietary changes, right? Modifying your diet by incorporating more whole foods, fruits, vegetables, and reducing processed foods can support detox. Now, my friend, uh, Elder Isaac on here, you know, he, he made a very good clarification uh, about good foods, whole foods, and junk foods. Uh, there is no such thing, he says, as junk food. If it's junk, it's not food. It's not food. And we trick our brains to say, oh, well, you know, I'm eating a little bit of junk food for now. If it's junk, it's not food. It's not food. All right. So you want to incorporate more whole foods, fruits, vegetables, and reduce processed foods. And this can support detox, right? It's important also to stay hydrated, drinking clean, filtered water. Uh, this is a simple recipe, a simple idea uh, to detoxify and to drink pineapple water every morning for a year. And you should see the following results. Uh, improve digestion. Uh, steady weight loss, effective and natural detox, uh, reduced inflammation. Pineapple is very good for inflammation. Uh, you'll have no sign of internal parasites. You will have improved vision, stronger teeth, a healthy thyroid, and a reduced risk of cancer. A reduced risk of cancer. You may want to take a screenshot of that. I move forward. I don't go back. Going once. Going twice, gone. All right. Um, somebody asked, I think it was uh, Marilyn, asked about fasting, and I promise we will talk about it. So fasting, uh, there are different, three different types of fasting. There's a regular fasting. There's something called uh, time-restricted fasting. And there were three methods for that. Uh, the first one, um, the, the common time-restricted eating patterns uh, include, number one, the 1618 method, 168 method. And this method involves fasting for 16 hours each day and restricting your eating to an eight hour window. For example, you might eat between the hours of 12 p.m. in the evening and 8 p.m. and fast from 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. the next day, the next day, right? That's the 168. Uh, method. The 12 12 method is you fast for 12 hours and have a 12 hour eating window. And it's often seen as a more manageable option for those who are just starting out. Uh, other variations uh, some people choose different time frames based on their lifestyles, such as the 14 10 or the 10 14 method. Uh, the idea behind time-restricted eating is to align your meals with your body's natural circadian rhythms. And we spoke about that uh, in an earlier seminar. Uh, one of the best methods, however, I would suggest is uh, finishing your last meal by 3 o'clock. This has been proven by research. If you have diabetes, you're diabetic, you want to lose weight, uh, you want to try to have your last meal, and you want to have two meals a day, and the breakfast is a heavier meal, the evening lighter meal, and try to have the last meal no later than four o'clock. The best goal is eight o'clock, is three o'clock. And if you have your last meal by three o'clock and you don't eat again until nine o'clock the next morning, that's an 18 hour time restricted fast. Yeah? So it's something that's doable. It's doable. And it, it works very, very well, especially if you want to lose weight and um, help reverse your diabetes. Uh, natural therapies. Natural therapy. There are benefits to uh, specific natural therapies, such as uh, aiding liver detoxification, reducing inflammation, or supporting uh, the health of your colon. Uh, one 
uh, recipe you may want to try is the liver and blood cleanser. The liver and the blood cleanser. And the method is to blend uh, everything together and serve fresh. So you're going to get two apples, half of a cucumber, two lemons, two beef roots, one piece of ginger, and three carrots. Right? You can take a quick screenshot of that. Um, we normally, uh, for ourselves, we normally use uh, the beet and the carrot. And we blend that and we drink that. And I'm, let me tell you right now, if you want power, you want energy, you don't need a Gatorade. Trust me, you don't. Uh, if you're diabetic, you may want to drink less. They uh, want but... to push as well. I'm sorry? They Dr. want to use it. If they want to grate it up really fine, the beet and the um, carrot. carrot, and mm -hmm. just some spice in it, it, it will taste like you put it in some bread. It tastes like so you're eating tuna fish. Right. That's, right. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, one of my clients <clears throat> who lives overseas, I give him that recipe. He loves tuna. I try to get him offered with the, the poisonous tuna. And I recommend he grated um, some beet with some carrots. Mix it together, probably some homemade uh, veginets on it. And he was calling me delighted. It tasted like tuna with none of the bad effects from the tuna. So you have the two recipes here, one for the drink. Um, as an energy drink, you, you blend uh, the tuna. Uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. You blend the, <laughs> the beet and the <laughs> carrot. Marlon, why are you laughing at me? You need no, to behave. It's, it's you need to behave, hey, Tommy, who is laughing? Whatever, Marlon. What it's you. It's saying? you. Whatever. Yeah. So you 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 blend you blend the carrot and the beet and drink it. You got a lot of energy from it all day. And then you have the cleanser recipe right here. Two apples, half cucumber, two lemons, uh, two beetroots, one piece of ginger, three carrots. Wonderful. But I wanted right. to say that looks like a heart. That's that's another one. You asked what's the something else. In nature, that looks like the body, and mm -hmm. the beats look like a heart. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, good eyesight, good eyesight. All right. So glowing, you can have glowing skin through being detoxed. Uh, detoxification isn't just about your internal health; it can also lead to healthier, more radiant skin. And so we're going to explore how detox can, excuse me, benefit skin conditions like acne. Um, eczema and psoriasis. So let's start off with acne. So acne, uh, is, this is where toxins and imbalances in your body contribute to acne. Detoxification can help by reducing inflammation and promoting clearer skin. Uh, acne is a skin condition that primarily affects the hair follicles and the uh, sub uh, aqueous or the oil glands. It is characterized by the presence of pimples, blackheads, whiteheads, and in some cases, some uh, more severe lesions like cysts and uh, nodules. Uh, it is often associated with excess of oil production and clogged pores. I normally recommend to my clients, besides detoxifying, that you shower with a clean rag just for your face and you scrub your face. Instead of putting soap on your face, you scrub your face with your rag. That takes off all the dry skin. It can help take off some of that mess on your face and clean your skin. Uh, a lot of us want to be cute and buy this colorful, girly uh, thingamajig that, that look like a net. And after a week is gone, they're going to buy another one. Just buy a $1 rag, keep it clean for your face, and that will help in so many ways. Um, the acne can be influenced by hormonal changes, especially for women having a period. It can be influenced by genetics and by various lifestyle factors. It is not typically uh, itchy, the acne, like um, eczema, and it is unrelated to eczema because it originates from different skin issues. Uh, eczema. Uh, eczema can uh, alleviate, uh, detoxing, sorry, can alleviate um, symptoms of eczema by removing the triggers like certain foods or allergies. Uh, so this is a chronic skin condition 
that is characterized by red, itchy, nasty-looking inflamed skin. It often appears as patches of dry, scaly skin that can become uh, cracked and may ooze clear liquid. Eczema is not contagious, um, it, but it can vary in severity. Now, it is believed to result from a combination of genetic and environmental factors. And uh, common types of eczema include uh, atopic dermatitis, contact dermatitis, and subarachic dermatitis. Eczema is not related to acne, and it's not caused by the same factors as we just outlined. It is usually linked to issues like allergies, sensitive skin, and our overactive immune responses. Psoriasis, psoriasis, this is the big fella. Uh, the potential link uh, between toxins and uh, psoriasis uh, lies in the idea that certain environmental toxins and chemicals may trigger or exacerbate psoriasis symptoms, which is an autoimmune skin condition. So while the exact causes of psoriasis are not fully understood, research suggests that environmental factors, including toxins, may play a role in the development and severity of uh, psoriasis. So th there are some ways that I want to give you three ways that toxins can potentially impact psoriasis. Number one is uh, immune dysregulation. This is where toxins such as certain chemicals and pollutants can disrupt your immune system's normal functioning. Psoriasis is believed to be an autoimmune condition where your immune system mistakenly attacks uh, the healthy skin uh, or the cells of your healthy skin. And the toxins may exacerbate this immune dysregulation. Uh, also, inflammation, um, uh, another another impact. Uh, some toxins can promote inflammation in the body, which is a key feature of psoriasis. Inflammation can get worse or can worsen the symptoms of psoriasis uh, that will lead to the development of red, scaly, and itchy uh, skin patches. Um, oxidative stress, we spoke about this earlier. Uh, toxins can also contribute to oxidative stress in your body, which is linked to the development and progression of various diseases, including autoimmune conditions like psoriasis. All right, so we want to talk uh, quickly about some detox supportive foods, and we will continue from this slide on next week, God willing. Uh, but some, I'll give you three detox supportive foods this evening. Number one, fruits. Uh, how many of us consume fruits every day? I do. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, Patricia. So the only person who consumes we fruit... We do. We do. Oh, uh, okay. So now the French people come out. We do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a anybody else? Eat fruits at least... At least every other day, if not every day. Every yeah. other day. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So fruits like uh, every day, doc. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, I, I know. I know, Doc. Um, Eliza, that you eat your fruits and you make a sound. Show off to me on me today mm -hmm. with your nice vegetables. That's okay. I'll catch up with you. All right. Okay, so sorry fruit... about that, but I, I... I still do too. So, one second. I got, one second. I uh -huh. back on. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Then I got cut off. Uh -huh. And I just, I was just able to get back off. No problem. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So fruits like berries, and you want to consume some type of berry every day. Berries, citrus, and apples are high in antioxidants and fiber, which aid in the removal of toxins. And we said that antioxidants uh, help to destroy and remove free radicals that you get in your, in your chemicals, in your fried foods, when you're frying foods, cooking with oil, and you're inhaling all of that, that causes free radicals. And the free radicals are like uh, wherever you may live in your city, one of those huge trucks that has those 
uh, those big iron balls to knock down buildings. One of them is running down the middle of the of your main street in, in, in your in your area where you live. And the ball is just wrecking buildings as it goes. That's what free radicals does uh, to your cells, to your cells. All right, also vegetables. Uh, vegetables such as leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, kale, etc., and and garlic. Uh, they are known for the detoxifying properties, especially if you have cancer or diabetes. You want to swallow at least one clove of garlic every day. Mm. One clove of garlic every day is very powerful um, to help to fight and reverse diabetes. It's good for your heart. It is good for cancer. It is good for over 100 and more things that it's still finding out for. And you could just cut it up in small pieces, slightly crush it, swallow it some water. It's very, very good. Um, herbs and spices. Uh, herbs like turmeric and cilantro are known for their ability to support liver and kidney function um, in your detox, in your detox. All right. Any questions that I can answer? If I can't answer, I'll tell you, I'll get back to you. All right. No questions. Wonderful. Let's move right ahead. <clears throat> All right. Thanks for joining us today and learning about uh, the dangers of toxins and how to detoxify. Uh, if you found this information valuable and you would like to support our mission to create awareness and promote healthier food choices, we welcome your contributions um, online. Have... Yes? So I have a question. So, okay. so taking the turmeric and the, because somebody told, I don't, told me that turmeric, turmeric destroys the liver. Okay. And what, what taking turmeric and garlic can that be done every day? Because I drink turmeric at least three, four times for the, for the week. I, I thought you said that um, both and twelve you destroy the liver. No, no, I, fast. I still do it because <laughs> I know that turmeric is good. <laughs> okay. I'm, not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm just asking. No, no, no. I've been. I, I'm not drinking a lot to destroy my right. liver. Right. Correct. So correct. I, I still correct. take my turmeric. What What about taking turmeric and still take the garlic? Yeah. Yeah. The, the garlic is. The garlic is very, very. Like I said, especially if you have cancer. Or, yeah. or prone to cancer, diabetes, it is very good. It, it's, it's not harmful to you. As a matter of fact, um, you can use garlic as a poultice, but be very careful. Um, it, the, the quercetin is very strong. So if you have like a, a boil or, or something on your skin, um, you could put uh, kind of cut some garlic up small, put it on the skin, put a bandit over it for about 15, 20 minutes. And what it does is draw out the toxins in your body and heal. If it leaves you for too long, it can burn your skin. It's very powerful, right? And um, so I, I never recommend chewing garlic because of the strength of it, of the quercetin. I recommend slightly crushing it slightly to get the juices flowing and then swallow it in small pieces with some water. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so I was saying that if you want to donate online, um, you can go to Heal Lifestyle Academy on um, PayPal, or you can sell um, your contribution. Um, all of those are acceptable. Um, you can feel free to contact us, to reach out to our team for more information on how to contribute. And your generation helps continue our research, education, and advocacy efforts in the field of nutrition and wellness. So I want to thank you in advance for your support um, in our journey towards healthier lives and a brighter um, uh, additive free future, healthy future. All right, thank hey, you for being here. Dr. Ray, well, I, have, I have a question. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I had to go back to last week's seminar, but um, you, you, you mind me, which I'd never heard of before, and I, I was a little distracted while you were giving a presentation, but um, I did research, and it seemed like it's it's not really a, an additive. It seems to be like a I know it's a Japanese, con it seems like a Japanese concept, and it seems to be uh, um, a fifth uh, sense, a, a fifth sense, no, fifth sense. Um, you have taste. sweet, taste. salty, sour, taste. and bitter, and it's like a fifth uh, taste. Yeah, so 
yeah. So, so it, I'm, if I'm it was to, become, the way you presented it, I'm, I'm just kind of confused the way the way you were presented what what we were trying to get across that we should not be consuming you mommy yeah I'm, I'm yeah and i went back and looked at your presentation i'm just a little confused at, okay so what it, what's, it, what's your because some of the again? foods that the foods they said like mushrooms and there's a couple of things in there that i have eat, that, that i do eat kind of semi-regularly and i was like well what's like i think mushrooms and uh tomatoes they mentioned has a umami uh, taste no, so no. if you could it, kind of clarify that for me for me yeah all right yeah i'm, I'm trying to so yeah. we mentioned in particular, if you go back over the video, not mm -hmm. just tomatoes, but sun-dried tomatoes, the one that you buy. Yeah, right? So go back and look at the video again. Yeah, sun-dried sun -dried. Yeah, sun -dried okay. tomatoes. And like you said, the umami is a taste. It's the fifth taste, sweet, taste. sour, bitter, salt, and umami. Right. And mm -hmm. those, it's very addictive, the taste. So they use that especially in Chinese and Japanese cuisine, mm -hmm. in the foods to give you that, that taste to get you addicted to the processed food. That's why it's very dangerous. Okay, I got you. And, I mean and mush mushrooms also, mu a mushroom is a fungus. So you want to be careful eating mushrooms. That's a fungus. Yeah, but aren't some mushrooms okay to eat? <laughs> I, I, all mushrooms are mushrooms. It's a fungus. But it's your choice. <laughs> okay all right um, yeah it's it's dangerous and and <clears throat> well, this is kind of going to my other maybe question of it the, the another umami food i mentioned is like uh seaweed and i do eat occasionally some seaweed which i so tell you <laughs> i really don't this tells you i really don't like but um i i, I guess i i think i learned somewhere that's very rich in minerals you know and seaweed that might be coming from Maybe like uh, this this product I have the the, the I, I, yeah something that the Japanese use in their cuisine, and um, so I get the dry seaweed. I add water to it. And I add it just a sprinkle of it to my salad. Um, and to tell the truth, I really don't like it, <laughs> but but um, I feel like it's you know I've been using it sparingly, um, and I feel like it's you and your it's wife benefit to my body. But anyway, um, brother, brother Kevin, so like you and your wife. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, um, and, and, and I've been thinking, I've been thinking this for a while. But then you, you know, when you talk about the fish, because I do like to eat fish, okay. but um, I've cut down dramatically over the years, and um, pretty much like if I won't eat fish, I, I mean, I do eat fish. I don't go out and I don't buy it. But being you know, 